Welcome, everyone. I'm Taryn, the Influencer Manager at Alluvium, and today we are going to be having a panel discussion with the Marketing Subcouncil candidates. So let's not waste any time and get straight into it. I'm going to bring them all up right now. What's up, guys? Uh, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump straight into it. Zeptile, I'm going to get off oh, for everyone. I'm going to give you guys a chance to intro yourselves and just say something that is unique about yourselves or, or something unique that you bring uh, to this discussion that that sets you apart from anyone else on this on this panel, I guess. Zeptile, go for it. Cool. Uh, hey, I'm Zeptile. I'm 30 years old. I'm recently became a dad professionally. I'm the founder of a web marketing adjacent agency established in 2017 here in Switzerland. Uh, in my spare time, I do esports, but that probably most of you already know. Uh, I've been a pro player, a coach, and actually that gave me a lot of insight on why is esports actually such a powerful marketing tool for games. All right. Awesome. Appreciate you. Skariox. Um, yeah, I'm a content creator in Web3. I'm more specifically very dedicated to Alluvium. Um, I've done lots and lots of partnerships myself just as my own personal brand, as well as bringing multiple different uh, di different kinds of people together for both the Wildfire Guild, my own personal brand, and even helping out the Alluvium, uh, the Alluvium company as well. And I'm a designer, so I've done lots and lots of different sort of design tactics to try and understand customers and consumers much, much better so that I can sell to them better. Um, and that includes lots of things like gathering feedback, organizing data, and all the rest of it as well. Awesome. And I also need to clarify that uh, Lubum is not a company. It is a DAO. I still yes. need to clarify that publicly. Uh, JP. <laughs> My hotkey wasn't working. Um, Hey guys, yeah, so I'm JP. I'm uh, the CEO and one of the founders of Arcade. Um, I think really what makes me, uh, you know, unique in this uh, position is that I have a lot of, of a lot of executive experience in the crypto GameFi space. Um, I have successfully run and, and raised capital and made partnerships for a brand over the past year and a half. Um, and so, you know, really what makes me unique i think is that i'm in this space 24 7 anyway right this is what i do professionally and um something i'm very passionate about so i'll leave it at that awesome appreciate you adrian go for it man hey i'm adrian um yeah my experience is uh building my personal brand back in as uh, when i was working as a uh, financial advisor so a lot of that was dealing uh, more one-on-one -on -one in small groups with, um, you know, referral partners and customers and those sorts of things, um, just to build that uh, engagement on how we can uh, bring the right customers to us. So, yeah, that, that more small group one-on-one -on -one education type um, perspective is what I bring. Awesome. All right, Muffin. Uh, Muffin, you're muted. Yo. Yep. Yo, uh, Muffin Man here. Um, yeah, reason I put my name as a sub counsel in the marketing side is pretty much um, I have a really outside-the-box way of thinking of doing things. I work in sales as a profession, 9 to 5, and I really feel that I can bring their skills to the table. Awesome, Dan. That was short and sharp. All right, Sam. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm DJ Sam Withers. Uh, I've been in the crypto space for about eight years, probably too long. And uh, my day-to-day -day job is nothing. I don't do anything. I DJ maybe three or four times a year. Uh, I've been in the influencer or marketing space for 10 plus years in the social media. I have over 250,000 followers on most of my social media. So I know how to grow a personal brand and I can take that into a, I guess, a Dow company um, sort of structure and create a personality for alluvium because i see massive massive growth potential there's my elevator pitch awesome all right uh <laughs> sandro yeah hi guys my name is sandro um i'm running the largest crypto gaming uh, youtube channel uh in the german market and sorry i'm not a native english speaker so sometimes it's hard for me to find the right words um and yes, I'm self-employed since 2016. I am an e-commerce consultant, so I have an agency in Germany and we are building brands. So we are very focused on creating products and uh, selling them through marketplaces and online shops. And 
Yeah, I think uh, this makes me unique because I see a lot of potential for Illuvium as a brand to create products. And um, yeah, that's why I'm running for the sub council uh, marketing. Awesome. All right, Bine. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It is Bine, correct? Uh, Bine Koshi, yeah. 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 Um, Bine Koshi, I'm a part of uh, Illuvi Hub team. I currently work as a web dev. Uh, I also have uh, more than five years of experience working in marketing department in LG Electronics. Uh, and for the second question, I, I'm pretty active around the community. I, I, I like to think I also uh, have a bit of everything and I'm pretty versatile. So I think that's a great fit in the uh, marketing uh, sub council. Uh, but something that maybe sets me apart from everybody else is my uh, math uh, background and uh, the way of thinking. So I think that can be uh, really helpful during uh, analysis and council meetings. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys for, for introducing yourselves. And now let's get into the, the fun stuff. This, we're going to start off hot straight off the bat. There's a lot that's happened in the last six months, and we have heard a lot from the community, and I'm, I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say about this. Let's say we had the sub-council, the sub-council six months ago, and if you were in that sub-council, what changes would you have made in, in the way that we, we marketed and the marketing efforts that you saw? Uh, let's start with, I'm going to start with Sandro, and then we'll, we'll go around there. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, um, it's a, um, a big question because if you want to market or start marketing for something, you need to have a product. So the question is, what's, what product is going to be uh, you want to, to create an audience for? So at the moment, we are in a phase which is kind of boring, I would say, for everyone in the Illuvium uh, community because we all have to wait that... Uh, something new is coming. So what I would have uh, done different is I would uh, had put more focus on new products where we could engage the community more. For example, like physical products. And in my opinion, uh, it's very important to have products um, for the community where we can consume something without... Um, getting a return for it and i think this is a, a there's a lot of potential which is not used uh, yet and this would be something where i would uh, yeah what what i would have done different six months uh, ago so because at the moment it's only iluvitas and uh, yeah the new private beta and stuff and the regular updates for new illuvials and stuff um, but yeah this would be right. my point awesome all right sam i'm gonna bring you up man Sure. Um, first off, I want to say there's no wrong or right in marketing. Uh, so whatever Alluvium is doing or has been doing is, is fine. Uh, I think there's some maybe ways I would have improved it. And if it was not just me on the council, but if I could go more in depth, that I would have probably, probably focused on PVP, trying to bring that out super early. That way there's a product to actually market. Um, right now it's a bear market. No one's excited. You can't really onboard more users at this stage. So what I would have done is educate, 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 educate. Whoever's in the sort of Web3 space, try and bring them over. Don't spend marketing money. It's a waste of money. And yeah, that's probably my primary focus. I think, yeah, they have such a great following and you like phenomenal content. I think if it was structured in a way over the past six months that can provide more value and more like talking points. Uh, you can see other companies do this in the Web3 space like Clanosaurus that I'm a big fan of. I think uh, if we took a leap out of their books over the past six months, we could have positioned ourselves much better. But it has been already what it is. And uh, all we can look at is uh, to move forward. All right. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to throw JP in there. I think he, he's got something to say about this. Yeah. No, I, I actually disagree that there's not a lot that could have been done in the past six months. I um, mean, not to say that Alluvium didn't accomplish things in the past six months, but I think having a private beta that is polished enough to where people can actually play it right now is a powerful tool that could be used for marketing. And 
more importantly, it's a free tool that could be used. We could be going out to partners, setting up, you know, streams, competitions, you know, fun ways to engage in the community just so that we can, go, you know, and, and I, Alluvium has created this very behemoth brand that other games in the industry want to be associated with us. They want to, you know, bring us in and, you know, bring their community into ours and, and do this fun stuff. So I think, yeah, we don't have the perfect polished public product yet. But we do have some tools that could be used and more importantly, used for cheap. We could even have people paying us or funding our prize pools just in exchange for the exposure to bringing our community over to theirs. Right. So I think in terms of tournaments and stuff like that, there is a lot that we could have done on that uh, it just in the past six months. Right. OK. And I think, Sam, you've kind of directly gone against. Um, yeah, I mean, what Sam, said. No, so Sam, I'll bring you just, back in and then we'll start the rotation. Yeah, Continue sure. Sorry. Uh, just to push back on JP, uh, a question is with the private beta, you're saying with Overworld and uh, the arena style that you would market it trying to get other, I guess, Web3 people over. Um, I think the only issue I have with that would be that there's no real good product right now with Alluvium. You could probably bring some people over from other communities and you might get like a drabble. But for the time and effort and resources in that area, I think that can be spent elsewhere, in my opinion. But that's my pushback. All right. No, that's fine. Yo, Zep, I know you want to get involved in this, so I'll bring you up here, man. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, uh, I have a few disagreements here with you guys. I'm really sorry to be that guy. But um, first, actually, I even disagree with the merch thing that was spoken before. I think that merch is something that you release once there is a product and a demand. I think we've seen with the Bulldog jerseys what the demand is actually for Illuvian merch. So that would, if I was being in council six months ago, that wouldn't have been a talking point. And about our beta being a product that we can sell now, we have like 30 daily users in our game. Guys, wake up. Okay, <laughs> awesome, awesome, all right. Uh, cool, uh, let me throw Muffin Man in. Uh, I'll let you go in, man. and. Share, share with us what you think. If you were in, if we had the marketing sub council six months ago, what would you have done differently? All right, um, probably going back, back six months ago, we would have to say it was the overworld release from now. Um, going back, you know, I would have been able to be giving more user access for the beta itself so we could get more exposure for the game. And that would come at a less cost for the DAO. Um, Ways I would do that, I probably wouldn't have done it straight away, but maybe after a three month period with it all, do more engagement through our main source, which is probably Twitter. We have so many followers at the moment. We've got about 30,000 people average. I'm not sure the exact numbers with the access, but we could have given more to those who would be more willing to engage with Twitter itself and just sharing the love of the game. And hopefully I've got enough time on this one, but you know, I would have even reiterated the fact of like the use case of the token itself. You know, I feel like that type of information got lost in the background with everything else that has gone on. And I guess, you know, the governance that comes with the token and the stake and the revenue distribution. Now, I can understand there's no revenue distribution going on at the moment, but 12 months from now, when there actually is a full game release, I think that's the type of knowledge people need to know. And those are the types of things that we've done differently. Right. So again, focusing on, on education more than anything. Definitely. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Scarx, I'm going to bring you up, man. Um, you as someone in the council, obviously we didn't have a marketing sub council, but, but what are your thoughts here? If, if there was a marketing sub council and you could change the marketing efforts, what would that be? Um, so the first thing is definitely better communication surrounding the major events such as Alluvium Beyond and the Overworld on the official channels was really, really lacking. Like we should have been slamming like three to four tweets every single day, many, many videos, especially for the Alluvatars sale and the Alluvium Beyond sale. And we just kind of, it just kind of missed the mark on some of that sort of stuff. The other things was more, a more consistent marketing stretch on Twitter and things like that. But also, I would have been done. I would have done much more engaging and fun giveaways. I think this aligns a bit with what JP was saying: is that you had all these giveaways and all these creators that did these ten disc giveaways on and retweet and tag two friends and stuff like that. That's not how I think we should be building the Alluvium brand. I think the Alluvium brand is should be built on the IP and built for longevity. And these sorts of giveaways are a little bit weak. I mean, they get some eyeballs on the project. They get some eyeballs on Alluvium Beyond, but they don't build up the community. They don't add to the community. I think doing 
more engaging, larger collaborations, giving away different prizes in different ways, and even some competitions and tournaments and things with the existing products we have would just help the community engage with it a bit better. Yeah, all right. Awesome. All right, Adrian, I'll, I'll let you have your say, man. What, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, so, yeah, similar to Scoriox, so the getting the community engaged so that when people do come here, they see a fun, engaged community. Um, and things as simple as when that uh, Halloween art competition was on, that's a, you know, a low-budget sort of activity, but there's a lot of... Uh, engagement there from the community around that and everybody um, having positive things to say on Twitter, etc. Um, but also anything that we could create that uh, shows off the brand or, um, you know, the the character of the Illuvials or anything that they can, people can uh, connect with that isn't just a point in time marketing, but it's something that new people a year from now can look back on and it's still relevant to them. I think this is a good time to be building that sort of um, stuff Mm -hmm. because that way it will continue to add value as we head into game launch and launch. Yep. Understood. All right. Uh, BNA, your thoughts here, man. Uh, I think the biggest thing missing was uh, the communication with the community on the marketing part of uh, side but uh, overall i think the illuvium is doing a great job for example now with marketing the next private beta there is a lot of tweets uh, videos and everything so it's hard to market something that isn't live and won't be for the next uh, six months but i think we are doing a good job as illuvium but uh, i think we can have a conversations and try to improve it like uh, a launch party party for uh, Illuvium, uh, Illuvitar's launch was, I think, a success. But three days later, we had a non-alpha Illuvitar launch and we really didn't have enough, in my opinion, to market that. So I think uh, there, Illuvium is doing a good job, but I think uh, a lot of things can be still improved. So another point that's come up quite a lot now, especially with the sub-council, is the experience of of the candidates in in marketing um and how that's going to be valuable for for alluvium uh can you guys each of you guys share a specific instance where you've successfully brought partnerships or collaborations to a project and i'll start with um i started with sandra before so i'll start with sam you i'll, I'll let you start <clears throat> off man yeah sure um <clears throat> so currently i am a advisor for another web3 uh game uh and they're very, very close with, if you guys know Animoca brand. So I have contacts in that sort of area. Again, I want to preface it that I, I don't think this is what should be focused on right now due to limited resources that uh, the marketing team has or Illuvium itself. But uh, if I need to talk about my history is I have built personal brands and uh, done branding in that sense with people with 100,000 followers, millions of followers and teamed them up with, you know, big, big brands that you guys well know. Uh, so I can be very, very useful in that area. I don't say it's my expertise. Uh, at this stage because I'm more focused on growth, education, numbers, back end, you know, what's working, what's not working. Uh, and I think if someone had a, you know, a better, better eyeline site for this than what I do and has better contacts, it's probably good to team up with me and that person. But I do have access to, to them if need be. But again, I would use that more closer to launch date because I find it you get one shot to, to basically say, hey, this is the game. This is what we've got. And if they don't like it, say, you know, if we did it around now time frame, I just feel like it's not strong enough to, to go to these partners and these, uh, you know, these big games. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Adrian, what are your thoughts here, man? Uh, can you share an, ex- uh, an example of, of when you brought a partnership um, or collaboration to, to a project? Um, so, again, just with my um, previous experience, it's just around finding um, other uh, – professionals in the similar well that would have similar audience to you um and finding how not just they can benefit you by giving you the um their customers but also um the way you can help them so if in the web three space or with uh, alluvium i'd be looking for that sort of mutual benefit partnership um so 
yeah, uh, not much experience in the Web3 space bringing those sort of partnerships in. But yeah, that's the sort of um, skill set and perspective that I'd be bringing to those sort of conversations. Okay, awesome. Uh, Skurrux, I'll, I'll throw you in here, man. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, you are muted. <laughs> <laughs> um, through my design background, I've become quite adept at finding the strengths of a given project and connecting them in, a, in an effective way to those I'm trying to partner with. And I've, I've made plenty of partnerships myself as my own brand, but I've also brought things like the CX11 district to the Alluvium DAO. I brought connected big time and wildfire, arcade and wildfire, as JP would know. Um, and many other different partnerships between these different systems and um, ecosystems, as well as even connecting my own personal brand to some key players in um, IMX and things like that, and making sure I build up those connections and those those relationships. I feel like that's often more important. And as DJ Sam was saying before, is that even though we're not necessarily ready to go out and present our game because it's not quite ready, it, it's a little bit half-baked in some sense, we can still start building these relationships really, really well. And I've, I've got quite a few of those connections in the Web3 space at this point, and I'm always building more, believe me. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, Muffin Man, go for it. Yo. Um, yeah, look, I'll be straight up with you, man. I haven't really got much experience with actually bringing them all together in the first go but i do have experience in maintaining those relationships because i do believe when you do have two partners coming together collaborating together it's all about working together strengthening that relationship not only in the present but also the future and a quick example i'd like to share is obviously like the bulldogs going on at the moment like the way i see that is um they have a lot of we've got a promotion going on with them i mean sorry a collaboration partnership going and it's about fine tuning that partnership to make it better, not only for now, but for the future. And it's little key things that I've seen, like obviously being a local myself, like I've seen that they've, and this is probably going to be a bit off topic here, but just as an example of enhancing that relationship would be they've recently done an Instagram post, but they've had the fight for ETH slogan there. I think that should be addressed. It's being like, hey, we're trying to avoid that area. So just a suggestion to take that out. I've been to one of the home grains recently. They show the Bitcoin logo, discuss with them, hey, can we change that to an Ethereum logo? And then not only that, and, and this is given if we have those resources available as a DAO, is, hey, would, what would you guys think about us creating some sort of animations for when they do a try? That would help strengthen the relationship today and then hopefully moving forward, which I do see hopefully the game being released season seasonal next year. That could help us be in a stronger position than where we are now right. and yeah awesome awesome all right uh bna what, what are your thoughts here man uh in all my marketing experiences i uh, haven't really been bringing partnerships but uh, i have a lot of experience working with uh, large partners and uh, talking with their marketing departments uh, in my day job but uh, if I'm being honest, I'm not uh, really seeing myself as someone who will be bringing valuable partnerships to Illuvium. But uh, I think I can bring a lot of different things apart from that to the council, like analysis about the partnerships uh, we're trying to bring. Does it work out for us? Uh, can it improve Illuvium? Uh, can it bring value? And asking some critical questions like that and crunching the numbers on everything. So that's where I see myself contributing. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, JP, um, go for it, my man. Yeah. So uh, in terms of kind of, you know, experience that I bring into the council, um, I've had, I, I started and owned a marketing agency in my past life. Um, so I've been in business and marketing my entire professional career, but I had an agency that uh, was actually gamer focused for like traditional content creators. Um, and I started that was a success. We, uh, we sold it off whenever I got more involved with crypto. And so I have some traditional experience there, but I think more importantly and more relevant is that, you know, with arcade, I have, you know, over the past year and a half, I've, I've been on probably 500 pitch calls with VCs. I've raised, you know, $8 million from over a hundred venture capital. I have, you know, over a hundred strategic partnerships that I've created for Arcade and I can get in touch with basically anyone in the space, right? I mean, Alluvium has reach already, but this is what I do all day anyway. I'm meeting with a dozen games a week because Arcade is a game fight infrastructure. So 
through this relationship that I have with the space, I'll be able to, you know, have ties to all of the top venture capital, all of the top games that are building, all of the top, you know, content creators that are making content. I think that is really the, you know, in terms of experience and knowledge that that I can bring to the council. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, Zeptal, talk to us about uh, your experiencing um, your experience bringing partnerships and collaborations. Uh, first, uh, I think there's kind of a consensus here um, with uh, my fellow nominees. Uh, I think we all agree that actually it's not going to be really our role to bring those partnerships. I think if someone cares enough about Illuvium and has a good partnership opportunity, they will bring those partnerships to the directly to the marketing department or marketing to the council, regardless of their position, right? So that's not only on us. To my knowledge, it is not our role to bring those uh, those partnerships, right, Tyron? Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Like you maybe know more than us. I mean, I am meant to be. Yeah, I, I'm I'm meant to be objective, but uh, it would be nice for for you guys to do that. As as I've said multiple times, um, it's the the marketing team currently is is on full execution, and it would be good for um, the sub council to act as as an extension of that. So uh, sourcing sourcing partnerships and opportunities like that is obviously not the role, but it's not like we would push that away. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll bring you back, Zeptal. Uh, yeah, so, okay, good to know. Um, so, sorry, I'm not an English native either, so I need to <laughs> uh, rewind everything. Um, <laughs> So the thing is, I always thought that our role is more to evaluate what is a good deal or not for a living. You know, what are the long-term implications? What are the costs implied? What is the branding on this? Like, what image are we sharing with this? The legal implications as well. Using the right metrics like conversion rate, ROI, retention rate, whatever, you guys all here know what I'm talking about, uh, is gonna, what's gonna help you, us to do the decisions that will truly benefit the DAO. Making that kind of an analysis though, is actually what I've been doing for more than a hundred companies over the last seven years in my job, actually. I've been always analyzing what's a good partnership or not, and either encouraging it or discouraging it. And I think that's what I can bring to the council. Okay, cool. I think there's a couple of people that want to jump in. So JP, I'll bring you in and then Bina, I'll bring you in straight after this. Yeah, in the, in the interest of time, I'll try to keep it short, uh, Taryn. <laughs> but I, I think, um, you know, when, when looking at kind of the broad implications of what the council would be, I mean, being a, a council member here is not a partnerships manager, right? I mean, so there there is a lot more to what we're doing, but I think having the connections to be able to go out and source, because you got to understand a lot of these games, yeah, I mean, to assume that they're going to come to Alluvium if they want to work with us and we don't have to do anything, they'll just come to us, I think is a little bit assumptive because I can promise you these games have their heads down. They're building their own stuff, right? They're not constantly just like, man, what can we do to get on Alluvium's radar? They're thinking, how do we build better games and be more competitive, right? So having that partnership you know, experience is going to be valuable just because we can source those deals and kind of make those connections. And then as the council, of course, we have to still evaluate those things and look at the brand, look at the legality. Um, but I think it's kind of a package uh, deal in my mind. Thanks, yep. Aaron. Awesome. Uh, yo, Sandra, I know you've been patiently waiting. I'm going to bring B&A up real quick and then you'll, you'll have your chance. <laughs> uh, yeah, I pretty much agree with both, uh, both uh, Zeptel and JP. Like, we need someone that can break partnerships, but we also need other people. So it's good to have a versatile uh, sub-council that can do both, pretty much, to have uh, people from different backgrounds. Okay, cool. All right, Sandro, I appreciate your, your patience. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> problem. Uh, I tried to jump in uh, to Zeptai's um, last talk about the e-commerce, that it's not uh, so important to have merch and stuff. But um, let's start with this question. So... <laughs> I think at the moment, it's not about cooperation and partnerships. So even if you just imagine Emirates would uh, have a partnership with Illuvium, it wouldn't bring us much new user, uh, user at the moment because imagine an online shop and there's a product. 
and the online shop is bad and you send 1 million people to the online shop, they're not going to buy the product. But if the online shop is, is great and has a good conversion rate, many buy the product. So what I'm saying is at the moment, we have to focus what is there and create products people want to buy and enjoy. With products, I'm not only talking about physical e-commerce products, but also like storytelling. We don't have a story about uh, our illuvials and stuff. There is so much we could focus with marketing to engage the Illuvium community. And just imagine everyone here in this call would wear an, an Illuvium sweater or Illuvium shirt or, or, or something. It, it's, it, there's so much missing at the moment. And also the storytelling part, everyone in marketing knows storytelling uh, story, uh, story is, is, yeah, I would say so fucking important for every product. And this is missing at the moment. So it would make no sense to have the big partnerships and corporations now. If the product and the DAO and Illuvium as a brand get stronger and better, they will come also to Illuvium to cooperate. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Now, and yeah, by the way, I'll, I want to make it clear. If you want to cuss, uh, feel free. I'm not going to censor you guys, but obviously uh, control yourself slightly, right? Let's not go <laughs> as crazy as, as Kieran. Um, <laughs> so, yo, and the next question, I'm actually really excited to, to hear what you guys thought of. And, and Zeptal, you kind of mentioned this before, so I'm going to bring you up first, actually. But with these marketing efforts, how do you plan to, to measure the success of these initiatives and campaigns? What, what metrics would you prioritize and, and try to optimize um, in, your, in your marketing efforts or in our marketing efforts? Well, come on, guys. Uh, if I start again talking about ROI, uh, KPI, uh, conversion rate, retention, that's something everyone here in this chat can talk, okay? So I think what's really important is that we evaluate what's the long-term impact of the campaigns we are doing now. If we, are, if we turn off some people now, they will just not come back. So we need to keep our branding clean. And just to talk about, for example, the, the, IAP, the recent IIP about not doing a disc battle with X or Y persona because they might be controversial. I think we need to keep going in that direction and keep our brand clean and out of any controversial personas. Uh, as well for the partnerships thing, we need to make sure that every partnership is mutually benefit, uh, benefit and there's a really win-win situation in the kind of a mu mutual growth uh, priority, I would say. Yeah, yeah, that's the key. Okay, awesome. Yo, uh, Skarx, wh what are your thoughts on this, man? What are the metrics that you would be uh, really focusing on um, to look at and to, to understand whether it's successful, unsuccessful, and, and how would you optimize um, to, to improve those metrics? You know, I absolutely love my data, but um, <laughs> I could build as many dashboards and everything is necessary to evaluate all the different marketing campaigns. And I would have a lot of fun doing that, but I don't necessarily think that's the best thing for Alluvium. I think something that a lot of people in the Web3 space are missing in general is large scale surveys. They might seem like a lot of work and kind of arbitrary and you get all these weird responses and you have to filter it all out. But once you do filter through all that mess and you get all those responses and you can you can reach, the Illuvium has the ability to reach thousands of people and with large scale surveys with different feedback metrics and things like that. That is one of the best ways to better understand your audience and better understand kind of where they're coming from. There's a reason that even e-commerce sites and things leave a lot of places for you to put in your reviews and get your little feedback cookies and get extra bonus percentages off your different products and things like that is because they enable these sorts of systems so that they can get a really holistic view of not just their consumer base, but the market in general. And that's something that's data that we just don't have yet. Not in, not in web three um, at all, really. And I, I think seeking that data out will be really valuable. Hey, awesome. Yo, uh, Sam, I was going to bring someone else on, but I kind of saw you, um make a bit of a facial expression did you have something to, to say to that or oh did i i mean i'm a very expressive person Taryn. <laughs> um no i mean I, I mean the surveys i just found very interesting from scorax i think it's a bit outside the box um than what i was thinking of anyway but um i think if i look at how you want to basically want to know how you <clears throat> um oof, what is it prioritize optimize 
What's the question? Uh, the metrics. You... Well, what are the metrics, metrics. that you Sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so the metrics I would use is, sure, you can have the standard stuff that we've already spoke about, like Deptile did. But uh, like I said earlier, like I feel like I'm a broken record, but now's not the time for growth. Growth comes in a bull market. Like I built my Twitter from zero to 100,000 followers in six to eight months in a bull market. That's when we focus on hyper growth. So that's not a metric that I would look at now. You, w- you want to see all the other NFT projects and everything now. What does everyone love? So if, if you get a community together, you see them all banding together, they're all sharing everything, liking everything. The social proof is so high that people go, shit, what's all this about? Like, I need to go check out Alluvium. It's, there's so much engagement there. I want to be a part of that. I'm missing out on these things. And I think if you focus on that right now, especially in the education process, I feel like you'll bring over people naturally and the right people as well. So the way I'd measure the growth is just the social engagement, educating, being a team, being one, uh, instead of looking at, oh, we didn't gain 10,000 followers this week. Yes, that will happen naturally, but there's a time and place, I feel, for that for those moments anyway. All right, awesome. Yo, Sandro, um, I, I made you wait a little bit, so I want to get you in a bit earlier now. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on, on the metrics that you would be focused on and, and how to optimize that? Yeah, I think at the moment you have to look at community uh, growth, education, and uh, token holders. So um, you can see on um, when you see, okay, what marketing campaigns are other companies running and stuff. We had a, a gaming company with a commercial at Super Bowl and stuff. And we have many examples where we can see, okay, it's not working at the moment. But what works at the moment is when someone has a passion for something, like I, I'm investing in Illuvium, I love what's coming. And I'm going to my friends and Tell them, hey, look, this is Illuvium. This is the community. I'm engaged. I'm love to being part of this. And you have to check them out. And I think this is where the value is at the moment. And uh, like I said many months ago, um, we have to make uh, offline connections and education. Like I live in Dubai since two years. Every week there is a crypto uh, <laughs> stand anywhere. So a crypto event. Um, and I told the team one year ago, hey, I can go there and talk about Web3 and what is Illuvium and stuff because you have to educate people at the moment and build trust and show them, hey, this is a great opportunity. This is a great community and also focusing on the token. I know this is a topic which, which is not um, yeah, transparent enough in my opinion, but Illuvium is or the, the token is also an investment and we have to to talk about uh, things like this more and um, not hide it. So it's we all focus on the game and what's coming. But at the moment to grow, we also have uh, yeah we have to focus on on uh, people who see a good opportunity. Uh, yeah. There. yeah, yeah, that that is um, a fair point, and I do need to make a very a very um, a statement that none of this is financial advice. I just needed to yeah. put that out there. <laughs> Um, JP, um, what are your thoughts, man? What are the metrics that you'd be focused on and, and how, how would you optimize to, to really to smash, smash those out, essentially? Yeah, um, look, I, I kind of disagree with the room a little bit in that I, so I've had some conversations with Andrew, actually, um, about some previous campaigns that they've run and, and stuff like that. And we've talked about the metrics. And while I think it's important to keep those things in mind, Previous campaigns that have been Web3 related focus, like blockchain gaming, just have not performed well. And the assessment that he had, and and I agree with him, is that the, the space really just isn't ready for that yet. And, you know, we can talk about the token, we can talk about, you know, the crypto stuff, the blockchain. Um, I think it's kind of a little bit like an echo chamber, right? Web3 is so small right now that we've kind of reached the people in the industry already like most of the web3 people know the name right so how do we kind of reset and bring in new people um what i would focus on is first of all events stuff like that in dubai and sandro 100 percent agree like you can cover a lot of ground at events um but more importantly i think we should be doing some if if we're talking like traditional campaigns i think we should be doing stuff that is very game focused right like you see an ad for alluvium fight for eth shouldn't be the first thing that you see it should be this is a new revolutionary auto auto battler like look at how awesome this is and make it relatable so that people that come into the uh, come into the brand and haven't seen it before are introduced to it in a way that they're just like okay it's a game right and then we can get stronger metrics because there is a better case study in uh, in place for for game marketing not so much web3 marketing mm, understood and i think uh sam wants to wants to jump in here man 
Yeah, sorry. Uh, just to push back on that, I feel like from my perspective that there shouldn't be any ads running at all for Alluvium. I think there should be saving resources, saving money right now. So if there was any ads running, I would be probably against it. Uh, again, I don't know the back end or the data. And in regards to events, my pushback here is, again, money, resources, time. If you're going to Web3 conferences, you're targeting Web3 people, which, uh, like JP said, that we've everyone sort of really knows Alluvium in the Web3 space. So, again, it comes down to resources, money, time. I, I just feel like we could allocate it better somewhere else instead of going down that avenue. Awesome. All right. Uh, Sandra, I know you want to jump in here as well, man, and then I'll, I'll get yeah. the other guys involved as well. Uh, I totally disagree with this because it's my personal experience I have when I talk with people who invested already in Bitcoin or Ethereum and stuff and they see a YouTube video where I'm talking about Illuvium and they're very interested. And once you talk with them and bring they in, they ask questions like, hey, how, how can I buy Illuvium? How can I buy the land and stuff? So um, I think it's a huge mistake to think that every crypto investor knows what is coming with web3 or what illuvium is for example when you see a, um, a an event in germany there was a big event in berlin with uh, 2000 attendees 2000 people in berlin to a blockchain conference and if you have the opportunity to speak to 2000 people and show them what is illuvium what is web3 and yes it's a game and we can also uh, show what's coming uh, this is a huge opportunity. And one, I remember uh, a talk with Kieran some months ago. Uh, we talked about AMAs and the impact on Illuvium and why it's important uh, to, to speak about it. And I think this is a huge mistake that uh, we don't cover offline events uh, this uh, much at the moment. Because I think there is a lot of potential to grow the community uh, for sure. But, okay. but wouldn't you... Uh, yeah, Sam, say, I was going to say, I'll, I'll bring you back in and then we, we right. should move on. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be super quick. But, but wouldn't you say, though, especially now with no real product, that it's a waste of time and resources that could be spent elsewhere? Like, I get it that I feel like if you went to an event and conferences that you could grow substantially. Again, I just believe when the, when the product's out, there's a right time and right place. I feel like that, again, we don't know, obviously, the monetary like situation as much as the, you know, behind the scenes. But again, I just feel like resources can be allocated just much better and, and uh, than doing that, especially with no product. Uh, and they're just investors coming in, not gamers. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can I answer this or real quick? Or? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Or you want to work Sorry. on no, 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 <laughs> you, you can go quick. You can go quick and I'll bring JP in. Okay. Because this is also a point. I think we all disagree on this maybe. <laughs> but I think the, the token and the ecosystem is also a product. So if you win an investor, you win someone for the community. So I think at the moment, it's not the right time to focus on the game. You can show a TFT pro who's only into gaming, not an investor. Hey, this is Illuvium. And yeah, and he's like, okay, can I play it now? No, maybe in six months. Or in Dubai, we say inshallah in six months or maybe <laughs> next year. So at the moment, it's not the right time to talk about the game. And if you win an investor who is ready uh, to invest in the ecosystem, I think this is a huge win at the moment. So, yeah, that's why I think the offline events are very uh, important to grow the community. All right, cool. Yo, guys, uh, I'm going to bring JP and Zeptile in, and then we, we, we have to get um, the other guys in, Adrian, Muffin, and, and Binet. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, sure we, I, we can stay here the whole time. This is, this is lively. Um, <laughs> this, this, this is lively, so I'm sure we could go back and forth forever, right? And this is kind of the kind of discussion that we want in the council, but... Um, yeah, just real quick, I wanted to clarify that, you know, resetting kind of what the question is, because the question is not, you know, how do we best allocate resources? The question is, you know, what is the the metrics and the measures, yes. you know, the measuring <laughs> we can do? So because of that, that was kind of where my, my answer was going. And in terms of like how resources can be allocated most strategically, that's a totally different discussion. I wouldn't necessarily be throwing ads at you know, uh, Web3 right now, because it is so expensive to find your customer. But for a game, it is easier to reach your customer uh, for less, you know, pay, you know, per click, basically, because that is a more built out uh, strategy. So I just wanted to clarify real quick that definitely yep. a lot goes into it in terms of, you know, resource allocation, in terms of just what metrics to follow. There just isn't enough data for Web3 at the moment that you don't, you're, you know, you're not going to reach as many people that way. And I think events are a great way to bridge that gap a little bit because you have a very concentrated group of people that want to learn more about um, 
about things. Sorry, Taryn. I'll leave. No, that's fine. That's fine. And yo, uh, <laughs> tell, I'll, I'll bring you back in. But again, like what uh, JP said, again, we actually do have a question coming up about allocation of resources. So we can go a bit more into depth there as well. The question here is about the, the metric specifically. So Zeptal, I'll bring you in. Um, you can do that. And then I'll, I'll bring Adrian and the other guys in as well. Yeah, I just wanted to respond to Sandro's point about the the time, etc. Uh, I actually think that investors are not a priority right now. Gamers are. And the reason for that is just our roadmap. Next step is PvP. The step after is be, uh, a public launch. So right now is the time to actually prepare that PvP and public launch. So right now we should be pivoting from a Web3 communication to a gaming communication. I think that's the priority for the next epoch. Okay, cool. All right, guys, I'm going to bring Adrian in. Yo, I appreciate you for being patient, Adrian. Um, what are your thoughts here, man? What are the metrics that you'd be looking at um, and, and how would you optimize that for, for Illuvium success? So once we get to uh, having a range of revenue generating products and the marketing's directing people to spend money, then obviously all of those metrics make sense. But at the moment, with where we are, the marketing's directing, the call to action is um, register your email address for more information. So that would probably be my main metric there. So if they're registering through the Illuvatars link, then we have success from that. And if it was an Illuvatars campaign and that's where we got the engagement, um, and then, of course, that list gives us a tool for future marketing. But, yeah, if the call to action from the marketing is to do that, then that would be the metric that I'd be using. Yeah, so conversions into registration, All right? Um, yep. Muffin, man, what are, your, what are your thoughts here, man? Yo, um, yeah, look, I think the most common one used in the marketing scheme is customer acquisition cost, seeing how much we're willing to actually spend on a certain area of field and what value is that actually going to bring back for the doubt? Is it going to be a waste of money? Like I do agree with Sam that we shouldn't be wasting too much money because there aren't that much, there aren't that much funds in the doubt and we want to be using those resources accordingly. Um, yeah, look, it's, I think it's just all about monitoring it all. You know, if we use those types of systems, we're going to do it on a fortnightly basis. We're going to do it on a monthly basis. And it is all about onboarding. I, I don't agree with the fact that it should be all about the token. The token is a benefit of the game itself. The game is what's going to be attracting a lot more users, which is going to be again, giving us and anyone else who has the opportunity to invest in the game a revenue distribution for themselves. And I think it's just an ongoing flow effect and that the game is the main priority. And whilst we all know that there are situations where we do not have that many resources, we need to be using those resources wisely and we should be looking for cheaper alternative me uh, measures and pretty much just, let's just not piss the money away that we're currently. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Uh, Bine, what, what are your thoughts here, man, regarding, regarding again, metrics and, and what metrics would we be optimizing? Um, we keep moving into the, the alloc allocation of resources, which again, we will cover very soon, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I agree with uh, Muffin Man and what he said, like the main focus has to be the game now. And uh, uh, you had a strategy panel today and there was a discussion, is, is game, game going to be live this year or next year? But uh, whether it's going to be this year or next year, we need to focus uh, this epoch uh, on getting everything ready for the game launch and getting the marketing strategy for that. But uh, meanwhile, we have to focus on building a brand that uh, customers can trust so we don't lose people because if we lose somebody, it's really hard to get them back. So uh, like Sandro said, uh, conferences are a good way of building a brand that uh, you can trust, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so guys, we've already covered this uh, quite a bit, but I know I, well, I, I guarantee you know that you guys have a lot more to say on this topic of, of allocating resources and, and where we should be doing that. Obviously, the topic of, of conferences, ads, things like that have already come up. But let's dive a little bit deeper um, and I'll just give you guys more chances to, to really speak your mind here. But what would you be prioritizing um, the, the resources on? What would you be allocating that on, uh, let's say, for this epoch, for the next six months that you're in? What do you think is of the utmost importance there? 
Um, and, and what are the what, what kind of platforms and channels do you think we should be allocating resources to? I'll start with um, Muffin Man and those guys because they they were kind of pushed back a little bit, and then we can move back around. It's all good. I love watching it all. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look, can you repeat the question again, sir? Yeah. Okay. So again, how would you prioritize and allocate resources in, in what platforms um, and, and what channels would you really be allocating and pushing those resources towards in the next epoch? Well, if we're going to be looking at spending on platforms, we need to be finding out which platforms are more effective. If we're going to be using the target audience, we need to find out which target audience is more effective. Is it which region is it going to be used on? Like, I know, I guess it comes down to a communicational tool is how we're going to communicate it to the broader audience. Is that going to cost money to do things like, you know, um, changing the language on Alluvium itself? Is that going to cost more money? I think it's just little things like that. I think it's all about the allocation of resources. And when it comes to the allocation of resources, it comes down to the timing of using those resources. There's no harm in prepping for it for when an event does come up. Let's say there is um, PVP comes up, right? We can prep for a marketing exposure before that event comes out. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to say on that. All right. Awesome. All right. Uh, Bine, I'm going to bring you up, man. What, what are your thoughts here in regards to allocation uh of resources? Yeah, I think it's a really important question, but uh, I, I don't think we can answer that uh, exactly right now because that's something the council will, ha will have to talk about when we have more information because currently we just don't know uh, what, what what is the budget for marketing and the rest of it. But if I want to answer it, uh, I, I think we can like a pl a play around uh, at the moment and trying to be getting ready for the launch, uh, trying out different things to see what works, what doesn't. So when we have the, when we are closer to the launch, so we are more prepared and ready. Awesome, awesome. Yo, I have to say, Sam, um, you are very expressive. I'm going to bring Adrian in and then I'm going to bring you up. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, no, don't apologize. It's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, very similar. So we'd need more information to know what would be the best bang for buck based on the target market for that campaign at the time. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's, you know, you know, brainstorming ideas and preparing and having some things ready to go for when the events pop up makes the most sense but yeah you need the data to tell you where to go essentially all right uh cool sam i'm gonna bring you in and then zeptile i'm gonna bring you in straight <laughs> up <laughs> oh, i love it um look yeah the boys are right 100 percent uh we don't know the back end we don't know nothing uh so we'll need to know more information but look if i had to pick off the top of my head uh we know web3 players are on twitter and a little bit on YouTube. There's no point going after TikTok. There's no point going after Instagram. Yes, they're growing. Uh, and so putting focus on them, I think if it's just like no ad, like ad spending, I would just focus on Twitter and YouTube. And I feel like we just need a, a six week plan or, or four week plan at least to, so that way we know what we're posting and everything in the future. So I'd allocate resources to basically Twitter and YouTube and just have a structure. So there's a plan in place instead of it feeling like, oh, we've got to rush things out. Um, so depending on resources and many questions you can do behind the scenes, you want to make the community, you know, uplifted, tease them a bit. And, uh, I feel like if you, you know, at the office, it, it doesn't take too much to do a behind the scenes video or an, a one week, you know, update everything, you know, on Monday from Kieran or something like that for one minute. Like it's, it's super inspiring when, when Kieran gets around, people get like excited. So just things like that would, would, would help substantially depending on uh, resources. Yeah. All right, uh, Zeptar, I'm going to bring you in, and then I know JP wants to jump in this conversation as well. So, so what are your thoughts here on allocation of, of resources, and, and where do you see that going? So, uh, I think the other nominees did a, a really good point in saying that we don't have data to back up this up. Like uh, another question that was asked to us recently in, on Discord was, do you think we should invest more into marketing? But we actually don't know how much is invested in, mar in marketing. We actually don't know mo most of what's happening behind the scenes. Maybe there are partnerships uh, ships signed that we didn't he heard about yet. But about the priorities, I would say that the first priority is everything that makes a big boom effect, okay? The big campaigns, like Iluvatar's trailer or the gameplay tra trailer one year ago. If we can make something as impactful for 
for example, PVP launch. Like, I don't know, we invite some Web2 gaming influencers to play a tournament with some cash price, etc., and really get our game into their channels. That would be great. Anything that makes a big boom and shows us to a new audience, because we're kind of circling into the Web3 gaming space, is going to be a, a good thing. And then the second priority is what we're just doing, not casually, but we're still always doing like uh, influencers, routine deals, partnerships, etc. But priority to everything, there is a big boom. It's okay if there are lower times, if we can just make booms and actually allocate the resources at that right place. Yeah. All right, cool. JP, I know you wanted to jump in and then I'll, I'll bring Skyrox in and Sandro. Yeah, um, I know I'm going to get pushback on this, but I actually disagree with most of what I've heard so far. I don't think that we need to have the specifics on how money is currently being spent, what budget is available. I think that regardless of what's been allocated, you can create a fiscally responsible marketing strategy without having those numbers, right? Like so much, so often I see people spending money just because they have it, right? If they come in and they say, hey, you have this big budget to work with, people are gonna be like, oh, well that changes things. Now we can spend more money, right? That is not the way to look at it. And you can create a strategy that mostly can be done for free without even having to know those numbers, right? And I mean, Alluvium has so many zero cost basis tools that can be used. We have access to the beta, we have, you know, free disks that have been allocated to the DAO that we can use as rewards. We have all of these different tools that we can use that people will value as monetary, you know, they'll place monetary value on it, but it doesn't actually cost the DAO anything because these are things that we've created that we can use, we can leverage. Um, and then there's, there's stuff like storytelling, lore, getting guilds involved, you know, all of these things that create a really fun atmosphere for people to get involved. And all of that can be done for free. It just takes work. Right. So I don't think we need to have the data. I think, you know, sure, it would be nice to have that information, but it can skew people's opinion into spending more money than it's necessary if they know, oh, we have this big budget. Let's throw more money at it. Like, that's just not the solution, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Uh, Skyrox, what are your thoughts here, man? Um, I'm actually taking a page from pretty much everyone's book at this point. I was I had a lot I had a lot to say. Um, circling back to what everyone else has already said, firstly with DJ Sam's points, I definitely think having a plan in place to create as much content on Twitter and YouTube as possible is very, very important. It's been extremely underutilized and there is so much potential there, even for the really little things. I would definitely be allocating a lot of resources there, but there's two really key metrics or two really key products I'd be focusing on here. Firstly, new products, which is pretty much what Zeptile said. Big boom, events, PvP, uh, survival mode, all the rest of it. And But the other really key thing I would be hitting on is retention. As we, were say, as we said before, Web3 is a little bit of a closed inner circle type thing. There's not many people that you can target that we haven't targeted already. So with all of these advertising campaigns and anything else we might be doing, I think targeting people with high retention tricks and metrics, such as tournaments, large... Um, prize pools, all that sort of stuff, where people want to get in and get involved, not just because there's a prize pool, but the more involved they get over the course of the marketing campaign, the more likely they are to stay. And I think that's a that's really, really important. And we cannot be missing that opportunity. For example, if after survival mode came out, imagine if Alluvium hosted tournaments every single week. With the current marketing budget, I reckon if you took away all the advertising they're doing on Facebook and YouTube and just allocated it to that, not only would the community be way more active and way more engaged, it would have those natural network effects and bring in so many more people that want to get involved with Alluvium, that don't just want to get involved just as a passerby. All right. I think uh, BNA wants to jump in and then Sandra, I'm going to get you in, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Zeptal said that uh, we should be doing a big boom. And while I agree with that, I don't think uh, now is the right time. We can, it, we should be doing a big, big boom, but we have to find the right time. And on the top, on uh, JP said that we don't need the info about money. Um, maybe we don't need uh, uh, the info about money, but we have to know what the data was on previous uh, marketing campaigns and what worked, uh, what didn't. So we can have ideas now, but it's uh, really hard to say what can we prioritize uh, in the future without knowing the data. Yeah. Uh, Sandro, what, what are your thoughts here, man? Um, yeah, yeah I, I really like to be the one in this discussion who wouldn't focus on the game 
and would uh, more focus on the community and the Web3 th uh, investor because an investor ca can also be a gamer like me. And um, I would prioritize uh, to grow the Web3 community like offline events and stuff I uh, already uh, told you and the network effect we have. And we should create better products for the community where the community could engage with Illuvium and f fell in love with uh, the brand. So like I said, I think it's very important to have a good online store with merch, plush, plushies and stuff. And you have so uh, so much um, you, you can do with it. It's not only about a plushie, but a plushie can come with an NFT. The NFT could be a cosmetic or something. And everyone sees in two years, wow, there's an early adopter from Illuvium and stuff. So uh, like only cosmetic NFTs and raffles and stuff. So you, you can create products at the moment to keep the community engaged. Products people want to consume and not... Uh, want a return uh, and uh, stuff like we have at the moment. So I think we should focus on the, the, the token holder, the growth in the Web3 three, uh, three space and um, storytelling stuff, better products uh, the community can buy. And yeah, this would be my focus. Okay, uh, Muffin, I know you want to jump in here, man, and then we'll move on to the next question. Yeah, look, um, I just have to agree with the whole plushies and spending those resources on those types of things at this current moment we don't have a full release of the game i feel as though that will come once the game is fully released well people will love people already love the ip but once i think the allocation of resources should really be aimed at focusing on the web 2 giving that source of information getting them to know about the web 3 and then once they get to know about the Web3, they bring them into Alluvium, then we can start marketing those plushies, those franchising events. I don't think there's any reason to be currently pushing for more money off our current user base without a full release of the game. Yeah, all right. Okay, yo, guys, um, I'm going to throw a bit of a curveball here. Um, okay, yo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring Sandra back and then, and then I'll throw you the, the curveball. Sandra, go for it. <laughs> Sorry, I also think I totally disagree with uh, getting more money from the community because if you love something, you want to have it. Like I have a, a, a five-year-old son, a four-year-old daughter, and they know what Illuvium is. They would love to have a plushie in their bed. It's not like a cash grab or something. So if you fell in love with the product, you would enjoy to wear the Illuvium merch and stuff. So I think the 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 view on this is, is uh, totally uh, wrong. And uh, I think... There is so much value in the community and people who would love to have this physical product. And it would also be a revenue stream with where the DAO had more money to invest in other marketing uh, stuff. So. so guys, I'm actually going to throw a bit of a curveball at you. This, what, this question, question wasn't prepared and it was actually inspired by something that Zeptile said. And I know it's a conversation that, that's been had quite a lot about transparency and marketing with the community. Um, again, I'm not going to go super deep into it. I'm not expecting you guys to go super deep. Just real quick, I'm curious, out of 10, how transparent do you think um, we need to be in regards to marketing with the community and, and why? In, in a very kind of short uh, short segment. It's, it's not prepared, so I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. I'm going to go with uh, with you, Sam, and then we'll, we'll move it around. Sure. Uh, short and sharp would be the best person I see that does this super well is Elon Musk. And I know that's someone higher hierarchy, but uh, if you're very transparent with the community and just let them know what's going on, it's much easier than hiding stuff. People find out the truth eventually, whether it's in one day, one week, many months. Um, sure, there's things you can sort of keep from the community, but I would highly advise against it. Just be super transparent, super honest, upfront, go, hey guys, we stuffed up. This is what's going on. Like, I yeah. just find that just being just an easy way to get your point across and everyone's on the same page. No, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. I think you said not to, but no bullshit, right? Simple as that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And, you and out of, if you had to, if you had to say out of 10 on a level of transparency, again, for, for marketing sure. specifically, not, not just every sure. marketing. I mean, maybe like an, I'd be transparent eight out of 10, unless it comes to like money and stuff that's not needed. Like there's common sense in all of this, right? Like yeah. the, there's some things you share with the community. And there's some things you don't like money and finances and things that they don't need to know per se. Um, in saying that, obviously with the Dow and having, you know, finances there, it's a bit of a different story, but uh, just, yeah. just logical. Like it should be common sense. I think. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, Zep, you were the one that inspired this, so I'm going to bring you in, man. Um, out of again, out of ten, and we're talking strictly marketing. 
uh, not just in general about transparency, marketing transparency, out of I 10 mean, and 1? I think, I think Illuvium's transparency is kind of equal all across, so I can just say the number. I think uh, some didn't hit too, too far away by saying 8. I would have said 7. But like he says, uh, a community a company or a DAO or... I mean, technically, Illuvium Labs is a company. So uh, there is obviously some stuff that you need to keep secret, either because you don't want to spoil or whatever, uh, or because just some things like finance don't concern actually the community, except that the DAO still has money into it. So like he says, common sense, some stuff should be available to the community and they shouldn't feel like they are we are lying to them. And the rest should just be completely open. And when problems happen, technical issues happen, we should just be able to say, okay, we messed up because of this. We did we underestimated the this or X or Y challenge. So now it's gonna take X amount of time or it's gonna be solved this way. As long as this keeps happening, I'm fine. Yeah. All right, cool. So so uh Sam with an eight out of ten, Zeptal with a seven Scarx, what are your thoughts here, man? Yeah, I think I think I'm in a similar boat with what Sam was saying about Elon Musk, and I would say maybe like a nine, but with, with a big caveat that you, you can't share everything. So I'm saying of the things that you have the the legal ability to share, I would definitely say around a nine or so, but, but there's lots of things such as there's lots of partnerships Alluvium currently has and things in the works. There's lots of things that, that we've already had in the council, this current epoch, plenty of stuff that we can't share under NDA and all the rest of it. And just if you exclude a lot of that stuff, I think being as transparent as possible just makes it easy to talk to the community. I think every single time we've had issues where the community has been very upset with either our decision-making or some of the things that have happened with the DAO, 99% of, of that stemmed from a lack of transparency and a lack of communication. And I feel like keeping up the communication, even if it's bad news, the community will almost always understand. And at the very least, they won't like, you know, draw and quarter you. <laughs> yep. Uh, JP, I'm going to get you in here, man. Out of 10, same question. Yeah, I'd, I'd say out of 10, probably like a seven or an eight. I think I'm kind of in line with, with the others. Um, the thing I wanted to really emphasize, uh, Scoriox just hit on that in business, there are oftentimes NDAs. I think that the DAO needs to remain respectful of those things, right? It's one thing to be ultra transparency, but we don't want to have this reputation of being loose lipped, like when partners come to us and they want to start to work on stuff. And a lot of what goes into marketing execution is having a little bit of that secrecy and having that hype cycle where you can leak things very strategically. Um, and if you're so transparent that the community knows everything that we're doing before we do it, then it kind of, I think, subtracts a little bit from that excitement factor that we can lean into. Um, so I would say of the things that we can be uh, transparent about, probably like a seven or an eight, I think what's left over from that would probably be for the good of the community that, you know, we don't want to tell you everything because we want you to stay excited. We want you to stay, in, you know, involved. And, um, and I think it gives us more marketing tools to be able to utilize when, when we have that little tiny bit of, you know, secrecy. Yeah. And that makes sense. Uh, Adrian, what are your thoughts here, man? Yeah. Similar to the other guys, so that seven, eight sort of space um, for, you know, similar reasons. Um, the only thing I'd add is that um, of one of the ideas that I brought up recently in the Discord was having a separate channel just for marketing discussions, just so that the community can discuss, have a space for that marketing discussions amongst themselves. Um, and I think that can be something that helps the community feel like their thoughts are being heard more and for you know marketing team and eventually us the marketing council to you know go into and address the community concerns rather than it getting lost in all of the other noise yeah yeah all right muffin uh out of 10 man what do you think how transparent in regards to marketing? No, i'm gonna sound like a broken record here um seven or eight man to be okay. honest with you i mean like, <laughs> it's um yeah, you got to be transparent. Everything that's going on behind the scenes, man. Like, guys, this is what we're working on. And that also comes down to transparency working with the other sub-councils, I think. You know, it's like, hey, guys, this is what the gaming council is doing. Just let you know. So, you know, you think it's unique or not. Or, you know, this is what the community is working on. And this is what the strategy is working on. 
But at the same time, you can't be releasing too much information because that could jeopardize certain merger deals or collaborations or partnerships that have been signed upon. And but at the same time, like Jackie said, you can get uh, drips and drabs, you know, timing when it's accessible, when it's okay with the other partner that you're having there. But yeah, definitely seven or eight. All right. Yo, I, I thought I was smart with this question. I thought someone was gonna go five out of ten or less, at least one person, but yeah. Pina, <laughs> what are your thoughts here, man? Save my question, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the only question where uh, we are all going to agree on uh, the number. But yeah, it's probably around eight or nine. I think we should be as transparent as possible. Some things just uh, cannot be shared and they don't make uh, sense to be shared. But everything that makes sense, uh, community should be involved. All right. Awesome. Okay. Well, appreciate you guys uh, doing that and and absolutely destroying my question. <laughs> but um, yo, guys, so we've got we're up to the last two questions now. One of these, uh, the next one, I'm really excited to hear what you guys think about. Um, and then we've got one one nice one to wrap it up with. But what are your what are your thoughts about working with gaming influencers, content creators, streamers, um, and and platforms like that to promote Alluvium? And and how would you well, what's your strategy with utilizing um, platforms like that or creators like that? I'm going to bring Skarax up as he is our resident <laughs> Alluvium creator. Um, I think the first thing to be said is that the biggest strength of Web3 at the moment is the amount of access we have to founders of projects and all those sorts of things. And you don't really have that in Web2. So taking advantage of that and taking advantage of collaboration collaboration in my experience has been pretty much one of the major driving forces in not just quick growth, but effective growth. It's an easy way to get people to latch onto your brand or your, your content or whatever, and actually trust what you're saying to them. So I think collaborations are really, really important. And I would be saying when you're partnering with these different projects, you've got to make sure you're finding the ones of the high caliber ones that follow a similar genre or a similar kind of community to what we already have as well but making sure that you're doing something active with them. I, I'm not a big fan of those sorts of collaborations where I oh, will give away some of their NFTs. They'll give away some of our NFTs. I much rather the sorts of collaborations where you're genuinely creating an experience for your communities, for them to get engaged with both projects and then move forward with that. I think one of the really good examples that Alluvium did, has done in the past is actually the DQuest platform where DQuest put a bunch of actual Alluvium things onto their platform to get us involved with their project. And it was really mutually beneficial for both projects. So I think these sorts of partnerships are really important. And I think seeing tournaments go across two different platforms or one platform donating a prize pool to our tournaments or something like that. I think those sorts of collaborations are going to be really, really powerful. And you can do them with creators as well, of course. But I think focusing on partnering with Gather Game Studios is going to benefit us a, a lot more in the long run. All right, cool. Uh, and yo, yeah, again, I wanted to re reiterate that we, again, what's what's the strategy with, with content creators and influencers? Um, I just wanted to re reiterate that. Uh, Sam, what are your thoughts on this, man? Yeah, I think I'm in a bit of a mixed bag, like the top of my head. I feel, I think it's a different story once PvP comes out. Uh, again, there should be no money spent whatsoever on influencers. There's barely any Web3 influencers in in regards to like other GameFire sort of uh, companies, DAOs and everything else. I mean, it doesn't, it's no harm like reaching out. Again, to do a tournament or something like that that's going to be engaging or fun, I, I think PvP is needed. So it's hard to say like a... Uh, an answer where I'd want to sit with this. I'd want to know more information again, like uh, the back end and everything else and where people's demographics are from. But uh, as long as it costs no money, there's no harm doing it, especially building those relationships for when you need it in about six months or eight months time when the game comes out. I think like I could sum all these questions up really, really quick and easy of like time to educate, you know, build relationships. And then when it's growth time, it's growth time. So right now in regards to influencers, I wouldn't spend money on it, but there's no harm doing uh, reaching out with uh, the game fires and everything else. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, JP, oh, what's sorry, your about? just oh. really quickly. Sorry, I should have added because I think Illumium did it pretty well with the disc battles. Like if I'm honest, they brought some people mm -hmm. in from the Web3 space. That's super cool. I'm not a huge fan of the disc battles. I don't find it super engaging. But uh, yeah, I just want to put that in there as well. So they're doing a pretty decent job at the, the influencers. Cool. And I, I also want to say we are going to be bringing back the disc battles. Um, I apologize sam that you're not a fan i think they, they're quite cool um <laughs> but andrew's andrew's stream setup is is getting getting worked on so the moment that's back we'll, we'll carry on with those but jp your thoughts on this man yeah um 
So I think, you know, I, I agree with Sam in that we shouldn't be paying influencers. Um, some of these numbers that I see from content creators are absolutely crazy. Um, and we have enough kind of community value that I think we bring a lot of value to a creator that's also collaborating with us on stuff. So there's there's no situation where I would be a fan of, of paying creators. Now, kind of my... And so similar to what, what has been said, but kind of what would be different in my strategy is also reaching out to Web2 creators that are and, and using my resources to get in touch with more traditional esports teams, people that would be interested in, in showcasing a game of this caliber. And again, maybe I'm, uh, you know, on my own here, but I think what we have right now is is polished enough that we could go to market um, with these content creators and show off something that looks really nice. Um, you know, maybe it's not perfect yet, but we disclose that and they disclose it to their community, but it's a way that we can start tapping into new communities. Um, and I would focus more on the gamer themselves, right? So reaching more gamers, not necessarily more web three people. Um, but both is great. Right. And I think there's no harm in working with creators across the board, as long as their interests align and as long as it's free for the DAO. Yeah. All right. Uh, Binay, what are your thoughts here regarding influences? Um, I think that content creators and streamers are maybe the most important part of promoting uh, Illuvium. And we need to make it work. We need to attract content creators. We need to listen to them. We need to talk to them. We need to understand uh, what are their needs. But uh, uh, we for now we shouldn't spend any money on that for now we should listen to learn what uh, are their needs and how we uh, can help them in the future uh, like yesterday we saw call of duty announced that there will be streamers introduced into the game as operators uh, we see what fortnite did with uh, content creators how uh, how they grew and like uh, content creators and streamers will be really important and i think uh, we don't need to spend money on that right now, but we need to talk to them. We need to learn uh, what are their needs and how we can uh, uh, how we can get closer to them uh, in the future. So we are also uh, be we can also benefit from that. Yeah. All right, Zep. I'm gonna bring you in, man. Thoughts here about influences. So I actually disagree on the fact that we should try to have influencers for free. Um, in a general way, uh, expecting that anyone does anything for you for, for free is, uh, I think, is just a lie that we are saying to ourselves. Um, the fact is, though, that I also think that we should just go to traditional gamers, not even just making the distinction of Web3 or Web2. A gamer is a gamer. What people want to see is a game, and what we are is a game. So we just go to the those big big influencers i'm talking about people like wolf click uh, emily wang this guy's toast those guys from tft etc you we make them not a good offer on the web3 mindset like uh a web3 content creator asks for something stupid like 40k that's ridiculous okay so but you go to uh, uh, talk to them with a way lower number but Explaining them why uh, a good, even exclusive content. Imagine if the very first time we see PvP is on those channels that actually drive hundreds of thousands of views to a completely new audience. I think that that's the way we should work with uh, content creators going forward is on targeting new audiences and doing it smart. I wouldn't be shy about spending some money on it if it's necessary. But I definitely think that spending 40K on X or Y content, uh, Web3 content creator is ridiculous. Yeah, uh, I think JP wants to, to jump in and then we'll, we'll move on to the last couple of people and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Yeah, I was just going to, to maybe add that to, to clarify or to, to you know be more specific. Um, I think, so I value people's time, right? As content creators, but I think we need to provide them with non-monetary value, right? So 
it's it's one thing to tell them like hey do this for us like you know we're this big alluvium brand like you have to do what we say we're not going to give you any value it's a very different scenario to give them non-monetary value like you described uh zeph i actually love the idea of like new exclusive content going to new creators so that the value they're getting is in views and traffic and exposure um but in a way that we don't necessarily have to you know, spend money. I, I just look at spending money on these things as, you know, a little bit uh, unnecessary when we have so many other non-monetary value adds that we can add uh, to the uh, the creator. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah. All right. Uh, yo, Binay, I'm going to bring you in and then we'll move on to, to Adrian real quick. Uh, yeah, I just want to say I agree with uh, Zeptal. Like, uh, we need that kind of marketing, but I don't think the time is right at the moment like for example pvp pvp will be out like six months before the game i don't think there is a uh, any value in spending money now to market the game when the game is only coming in like six months i don't think in my opinion it's worth it now okay uh adrian your thoughts here and then i'll bring muffin man and then we'll close this out uh yeah so when we have you know pvp and the um the games out getting those influences to stream those is great um but i think there's also that opportunity for the um what jp was saying that non-monetary value so um if there's the big influencers who um not just streaming games but they have their you know the panel discussions and those sorts of things and getting our content creators who are you know, experts on what's happening in, in Discord and the latest updates and those sorts of things and getting them to uh, collaborate as guests on their show, on their um, uh, platforms with their audience, then it gives us that exposure to that audience, but it also gives them the value if their audience is looking for that update on Alluvium. And building those sort of connections um, can help so that, you know, when something new and exciting happens, we have those connections for to reach that larger, larger audience. Because me personally, I find those panel discussion type uh, uh, YouTube videos and stuff more entertaining to watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, cool. Yeah. Muffin, man, your, your thoughts here, man. Yeah, um, man, I think we should be utilizing our whole content creators as a whole. We should also be looking to work with other content creators and in saying that maybe we should have them working together on a live stream. So say, if, I guess for me, it's like we should be really scouting for which Web2 content creators are currently out there on the Twitch platform because they are the live ones. They are the ones with the big hitters. We can look for the ones who correlate, who we feel like could resonate with our game itself. And then we could be like, hey, you know, if you wanted um, opportunity, we have this game. We have another content creator. Would you like to work with him? He'll guide you through the game. So it gives helps with the information process, passing on to their audience at the same time. And it's a really win-win benefit for all without having to really have a major cost to the DAO itself. Without, I don't agree with, like, we should be having to pay for people to play the game. And... I just think it really works well in that sort of sense. You know, it's a win-win situation for all. Yeah. All right. Cool. Appreciate you guys having the, giving those answers. All right. So the last question that we have before we wrap this up, and it's definitely, um, and I say this in all seriousness, the most difficult question of the night. And that is, let's say you aren't elected, <laughs> and but you could choose. You have a, a genie that could grant you a wish that you could, guarantee a seat for someone else on this panel or uh, a candidate that, that's not here. Who would that be and why? I'm going to start with you, Muffin, and then we'll go go back around. Um, if I wasn't elected and I seen someone, I see someone in this panel, I think JP Arcade, he's got a lot of experience. I've seen what he had done over the weekend, showing that initiative, getting that exposure, getting people together as a discussion. And yeah, doing a good job, man. What do you do? What do you say? Awesome. awesome. All right, Sam. One person, go. <laughs> Shoot. Um, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> He's like, I hate all of you. <laughs> no, because everyone has different views, right? You, you can't have everyone the same. You can't be all yes men. And uh, like Scoriax has value. I should say one person, right? 
Yes. I'll say Super <laughs> Score X because, one, he's got experience in the Dow already and we could learn a lot from that because we're, we're all new to it. Uh, he's pumping out content like crazy on YouTube, which is super beneficial for everyone. I watch all of his videos, even though I don't tell him that. Um, and I get a lot of value out of it. Like, he knows inside Goss. He loves the game. He has a passion for it. Like, you can't go wrong with Scorex. I'm honest. And Scorex, get off your high horse, all right? Yes. <laughs> Yo, he's going to go and make a video about that right now. DJ's coming. <laughs> no, he's, right. he's super good. That's, that's who I would say. All right, Scorex. Go for it, man. Yo, are you blushing? <laughs> dude, dude. I don't know, man. There's there's actually so many people in in the nominations here that picking one is is really hard. Honestly, I would have had to say JP. It's probably because I've had more interactions with him. I've known him for the longest. I mean, excluding you, obviously, TSG. Um, but like, I, I agree with DJ Sam that that differing opinions is what's most important to me. I want a diverse council, but I feel like if any five people, uh, any four people, sorry, out of all the people in this nomination at the moment got elected, I think we're all so different enough that it, we probably would end up with that no matter what. Um, the other reason I'd probably say JP is he has a lot of experience, has a lot of connections already in Web3. Um, but more importantly, he has an insane amount of experience with Arcade and things like that. And I think being able to, knowing how, what building in the space is like is obviously really valuable as well. And, and in all the discussions I've had with him, he's very receptive and very good at taking on other people's opinions and things like that. Again, I just know him better than, than most, than most of the other people here. So that's probably, that's probably giving an unfair bias there. I'm afraid, but yeah. All right. Uh, Zeptal, one person, man, who would you choose? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm a bit sad about other people's wish. Um, I think a wish is for something that won't happen. And I think we just all agree that JP is probably already in. So uh, I would use my wish to make Muffin Man in. Uh, we may not agree on everything, but what he said today was very insightful. And I think he used the right words. So I would be very curious uh, to either just have him in. Uh, him in instead of me or just to work with him awesome awesome all right uh jp so apparently you're guaranteed a spot um uh, but let's say that. you went let's say you but... went who would you pick <laughs> yeah i mean it's tricky right i mean i think everyone here brings a different perspective and, and different experience and i think that i've really enjoyed everyone's thoughts today um I would take a, a page out of Zep's book maybe a little bit and say, I know Scoriox probably the best. And I think he brings a lot of value to the DAO, a lot of experience, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of know-how. Um, but I think that you're safe, Scoriox, personally. So if I had to use my wish, I would say I actually really enjoyed um, uh, who, who, who left? Oh, I'm Sandra. like here. Sandro. Sandra. I, actually, I, I actually really enjoyed a lot of his points today. And I think that he's not afraid to get out there. Like, like Sam said, he's not afraid to get out there and disagree with you. And I think that's super important for a council. So um, I would say I'd probably give it to give the wish to Sandra. I think uh, he'd bring a lot of value and perspective that uh, would, would be nice to see for those discussions. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, B Nate. Um, maybe wish was a bad, bad choice, but, but who yeah, I, I think the, the safe call is JP, but apart from that, uh, I'm going to say Sam, I think he has like uh, completely different experiences from the rest of the panel and versatility is good for the sub council. So I'm going to say Sam in this case. Awesome. Awesome. And lastly, Adrian. Yeah, I think um, Binet brings a um, different set of skills to the uh, to the group as well. So yeah, I think having him a guaranteed spot would be good. Awesome, awesome. All right, okay, guys, thank you so so much. Uh, this it was a pleasure having you all here. Um, I appreciate you guys taking the time. I hope uh, you guys had had a good time, and I hope everyone watching found this valuable um, and and insightful. And yeah, helpful uh, when it comes to, to voting. So I appreciate everyone taking the time to be here, everyone watching. Uh, appreciate all of you guys, and we will catch you guys next time. Peace.